All right, World War One. Uh, the keynote features the Sussex, the presidential election of 1916, the Z Zimmerman telegram, April 2nd, 1917, and the Committee on Public Information. So let's talk about the Sussex first, right? So on March 24th, 1916, German submarines attacked a ship what they thought what they thought was mine laying, right? What they technically attacked was the Sussex, which was the French passenger steamer. They did, although they didn't sink the ship, 50 people uh, died. And many of these Ameri many of these people were Americans. So President Wilson gave the ultimatum that Germany would have to stop these attacks against passenger vessels, or they would have to go against America, right? And Germany they desperately did not want the United States to enter the war, especially allying with their enemies. So they respond to the United States with a pledge named after the French steamer, the Sussex, right? Within the Sussex pledge. Germany promised to change their naval policy so that they don't sink other non-military ships unless they found with contraband. Basically, in that case, they would sink those ships, right? But ultimately, Germany being Germany breaks the Sussex Pledge. So it was one of their greatest mistakes in the World War. So basically, the German high command thought that they could break Britain by pursuing submarine warfare against the nation and engage in a peace treaty before the United States even entered the war. Right, so they broke the Sussex pledge, and many of these enemy nations they were relieved actually because they this would mean that the United States would join their side, right? But the mistake that the Ger that Germany made was that Britain didn't collapse because because the U.S. Navy pursued a convoy system that protected their ships across the seas. All right, in the election of 1916, so the 1916 presidential election took place while Europe was entangled within World War One, and. At this time, the United States has not has not officially entered the war yet. They were leaning towards allying themselves with the British and French because of how the German army were treating many of their civilians, and because Germany invaded Belgium and because Germany invaded northern France, they really wanted to. They really felt sympath sympathetic through these nations and really wanted to ally with them. But many or most Americans actually favored neutrality and did not want to involve themselves within the war, which President. Wilson, incumbent President, President Wilson, used as his slogan. He was the one that did not technically engage himself in the war, and he used that in his advantage against Justice Charles Evan Hughes, who was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Taft. And he sort of campaigned on the pro-war campaign aspect of, of the people, right? And, and the end result ended up being President Wilson getting a second term in a very close election. All right, so the Zimmerman telegram finally pushed America to world to the World War. So America entering the World War was in inevitable, right? Many historians agree on this that America was going to end up going into the World War, but it was accelerated because of the Zimmerman telegram, right? So British code breakers got a hold of this encrypted message from the German Foreign Secretary Arthur Zimmerman, right, to Heinrich von Eckhardt. It stated that if the U.S. entered the war, they would have to sign a secret wartime alliance with Mexico, sponsoring attacks against the United States and helping them annex lost land that they've lost to the United States, such as Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, right? And they would utilize the Mexicans in order to get the Japanese into allying with the Germans, right? So Room 40's response, Room 40 is basically the British Cryptographic Office. And they handed the decoded telegram to the United States. Right? And we see this telegram right on this picture here. And the contents of the telegram were plastered across the front pages of newspapers nationwide. By this time, America had already removed diplomatic ties with Germany because of how many civilians they've killed. And people have had mixed feelings about this, right? Although they really want to go to war, right? They're still committed to isolationism. isolationism and they don't want to engage in European affairs. But... Overall, this this telegram finally pushed the United States to entering the war, and it finally they did on April second, nineteen seventeen. The motive: President Wilson declared war on Germany, saying that it was made in Germany, and he's right because they violated the Sussex Pledge. They've killed a mass amount of civilians, right? And then you have the whole controversy of the Zimmerman telegram. All right, so President Wilson before Congress. President Wilson seek the declaration declaration of war against Germany. The world can be made so that he said that the world be made safe for democracy. Congress voted to declare war while six senators and 50 congressmen dissented. President Wilson is quoted 
in saying it is a fearful thing to lead this great peaceful people into war into the mo into the most terrible and disastrous of all wars civilization itself seeming to be in the balance so here's my homie president wilson addressing congress all right this is following up his uh, address to congress wilson's 14 points address wherein basically he outlines his aims of war in order to promote lasting peace he called for self-determination freedom of the seas free trade and to secret agreements and development of a league of nations and in order to sort of garner support for the war he establishes the committee of public information via the executive order 2594 the committee was made up of muckraker george creel as the chairman as well as the secretaries of state war and the navy and it was basically the first day bureau that covered propaganda more specifically to counter german propaganda although it was initially a source of government news it quickly shifted to promoting the war they cpi they wanted to make sure that americans were not falling for german propaganda but at the same time they also agreed with the notion they also wanted them to agree with the notion of going to war again many americans uh favored isolationism and but this selling the war was made so that they would agree to going the war george creel made an unpopular war popular by entering the movie industry industry as well as implementing advertisements advertisements through the use of celebrities in order to launch an anti-german feeling within america this feeling through literature through music through movies through posters motivated americans to support the war against germany after president wilson's declaration of war and we see this through the artifacts these posters that they've plastered across america in order to garner support for the war thank you for watching